Hi everybody. I know I'm not dead for a while. I thought I'd do a little update here. Yeah, you can see yourself, can't you, Lauren? It is Lauren's first birthday on Wednesday. It's gone so quick. I'll just say that, um, no, you can't take my phone. <laughs> to say that, um, everything I've been through, um, from the finding the uh, fracture and because we couldn't explain it, saying it was a, I'm going to talk about how this day said it was a non-accidental injury. Um, it doesn't mean because it's not explained, it's non-accidental. Um, they was, it was a social service accused us straight away. They didn't even get a chance for the expert reports. So I started judging. Um, recently, we've had a letter from um, the hospital saying that this injury couldn't have possibly happened to the birthing process just because I had a natural delivery. Uh, well, yes, it were natural, but the midwife, she left me in the room at seven centimetres knowing it was my fourth baby what? knowing it was my fourth baby and um, she walks out the room like I've said in my labour and delivery story she walked out the room and next thing I know I say they want to push the tail down to go and press the buzzer. And he presses the buzzer and no no medical professionals came. He walks he walks to the bottom and the of the bed and he goes, Whoa And I'm like, What's the matter? What's up? He went, her head's out, I went, What? Her head's out and called her on the neck. I went, go and get someone quick. And then two midwives come in and they're, they're and she put in my uh, birth notes that I um, that she was in the room when her um, when her head was born. She put get get ingled when head was born and she wasn't there. She's just telling covered her back. It's like the saying this injury of a femur it doesn't occur at birth, but why is it all uh, of a natural birth? Why is it all over the internet that it can happen with no complications? It's rare, but it happens. Well, I'm going to talk about the social services, how, how they treated us. We had to be supervised for four and a half months by my parents uh, my mum actually was staying with me and my dad took over when um, my mum had to go out or my sister took over uh, it was awful everywhere I went with the children my mum had to go with the children no Lauren you can't have my phone <laughs> No, uh, uh, no. Um. So, wherever I went, wherever we went with the children, my mum had to go. It was awful for her. Like she said the other day, seeing me break de breaking my heart out, saying I've not hurt my baby, it killed her, and there was nothing she could do. I just wanted them to leave leave us alone and she was on the all four four of them were on the child protection register. The three younger ones had an interim care order uh, where the social worker would uh, just come out whenever she wanted because they were all under child protection. I couldn't name 
any of the children involved. I couldn't tell anyone outside, like the papers or anything like that. I won't, I won't put this in the paper anyway. Um, yeah. It's a phone. What's this? Phone. I wouldn't put anything like that in the paper. I'm taking because I've, there'll probably be an, there could be another court case for um, Lauren um, about Lauren's injury. I put a complaint into the hospital. They've responded back. They've told quite a few lies, saying that none of the family raised concerns, which we did. Um, because they've looked through my birth notes rather than questioning the staff that didn't get my drift. Um, getting tired now. Getting a bath soon. And um, getting bath and tea soon. The physio. Oh, you want to go down? Two minutes. Go on then. One down. Now, the um, physiotherapist has said that she kicked both her legs at a day old. How could a baby at one day old kick the legs? Um, there's no mention of the midwife. Or the doctor in the delivery suite. Now, there's no mention of them being questioned. They've even asked the orthopedic surgeon because one of the questions were how would he have got treated if he were picked up from the day, the day she was born, and they said she would have had to be in a public harness with a bandage around it. And it would mean that we would have had to be very careful with Lauren. Um, but when the injury was found, she was 16 days old and it was healing. Um, I think in my next video I will show you the fracture. I've got a copy of it. My makeup's coming off because I've had it on all day. Yeah, it's coming off my uh, eyeshadow that's coming off yeah I've had um where were I? yeah I've got a picture of the x-ray of these experts and I say in the hospital is denying every thing saying what am I complaining about yeah um they asked this someone called doctor Mr. Kabawa, um, I think he's an orthopedic, and he said that the injury to Lauren, she would have been in pain if she were, should have been in pain, and they're saying that because she was settled. My, I haven't got the letter, I don't know where it is. Um, I put it somewhere. Oh, I've got it. Got it actually. I could tell you a bit better. The letter. Um, that's just. Oh. It wasn't Mr. Cooper, it was me. I put question, how does a fracture occur as part of the birthing process? I don't know the doctor's name, it's an Asian name, it's a bit. Has advised that a fracture of femur, long bone, does not usually occur as part of the birthing process. A fracture of a femoral shaft of a femur is very rare during a normal birth. In most cases, when a fracture of a femur occurred, it is a 
it, it's it, it's too difficult birth. From the record, there's no evidence that Lauren's birth was difficult delivery for her. In the circumstance, it, it would not be unusual practice to, to, to significantly check for this as part of the routine examination. Even so, they should have still picked it up in my view. They should know if a baby had a fracture or not. Ah, I'll tell you about Mr. Coppola. Mr. Coppola explains that if Lauren's fracture had occurred at birth, they would not necessarily, not necessarily have been bruising or swelling present. But she would have been in pain and would have been unsettled. The review of Lauren's medical record indicate that she was settled, given a non race for concern. That isn't the case at all. That is not the case. Um, he's just answering the question that I asked. Um, this. When he's saying, because it's in a record, medical records that she was settled, it only happens when you move the baby or change the nappies of the baby, and that's what will happen with Lauren. It's because she got these talipes, and they, it, they said she got talipes on my 20 week scan, and they said that that's what was causing the pain, so we accepted the word. The medical professionals. Well, they're not going to admit that, are they? Um, they just kept saying it was fee. Um, it's quite annoying, to be honest. Um, it's trying to think what to say because they're saying that this couldn't really happen through a birthing process. That doctor just said it's rare. Doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Given the concerns raised by family members, should the fracture to the femur have been identified sooner? Unfortunately, there is no evidence in either Kelly's records or Lauren's baby records that the family raised any concerns about Lauren's. They've put right leg and it's a left leg. A detailed examination was undertaken following the birth, a medical examination by a paediatric prior to the transfer home and two top-to-toe assessments by the same midwife or the conserved days prior to leaving hospital. After the birth, these examinations all found no unusual swelling or bruising on Lauren's leg. Well, they won't have because the bruising didn't come until she was in the hospital on the 3rd of June where the fracture she was found and when my husband had to obtain a urine sample off Lauren on a catch ball that's when the bruising and swelling come out if you didn't put on that catch ball would never know she got a fracture at all however as her feet was noted to be puffy Lauren's further reviewed by physiotherapist and that time was able to move both legs I'm sorry but a one day old baby cannot move both legs, kick both legs or move them and was not noted to be suffering from pain as a result of her leg movement. It is possible the fracture was there at birth and misgiven Lauren's presentations when examined by Mestals and Sister Hudson, both feel based on the record finding these examinations that it is unlikely. We are unable to determine when Lauren's fracture occurred. It would be difficult to advise if the fracture had been identified sooner. The fracture did occur at birth. I have two, exp- uh, two three 
expert reports saying that the fracture of the left femur was done around the time of Lauren's birth. And I was definitely in hospital when this, this, this fracture happened. So, when they say around the time of the birth, they mean before, during or just after. When they mean just after, they mean by a hip check or something like that. Hold on, I'll have to pause it. Sorry about that. Um. So how do they know? Because I've got, like I was saying, I had, um, I've got three expert reports. Uh, but they do not know this, you see. Um, I'm going to copy this letter and send it to my solicitor. Um, what is reported in the medical records about cons oh, I've read that to you. Um, they're trying to blame the community midwife, which the, my community move. I I could expect my community midwife to notice anything. If we couldn't notice anything, if the health professionals couldn't notice anything. That's what I like to know. And it says here, a routine baby check carried out by midwife. Check of the baby and constantly on looking from the top to toe. She didn't do this. Midwife didn't do this. They're covering up. Should the community midwife had identified the fracture? I'm unable to respond to this as it is unclear as when the fracture was sustained. They're saying it's unclear when the fracture was uh, sustained. It was sustained through the birthing process like the experts said there was in agreement that it was done through the birthing process. This is my argument with them. They're, they're really ticking me off. If the fracture had been identified in a few days following following birth, how would it be treated? Mr Giles, consultant of pediatric surgeon, explained that if the fracture had been present and identified in the first few days, this would have been treated either with a public harness, this is a, spe a special harness used to keep a baby's hip joint, or with careful handling of Lauren's leg and a cup soft bandage applied to the harness and the bandage would have been left in place for approximately three weeks. My surgeon, he's, he's a really good orthopaedic surgeon. I s he sees Lauren in clinic every, I think it's about every three months just to check her legs remodelling itself and what it should be doing. Well, she's got no problems with it because she puts that leg in her mouth and she puts the foot off that leg in her mouth now. It says here, could the fracture have been avoided? I am sorry, I couldn't offer a reason as it has not been possible to determine how or when Lauren's fracture occurred. I am fed up of him using that. Could the problem... Lauren experience had been avoided. Yes. Again, I am sorry, I could not, couldn't offer a response as if it's not possible to determine how or when Lauren's fracture occurred. What problems does Lauren have with her feet? My sister has explained he saw Lauren in clinic on 24th of March 2016 and that she does not have ongoing problems with her feet. When what Lauren was seen by the physiotherapist on 19th of May 2015, she was found that Lauren had a slightly shorter alley. Well, I'm not very good at reading, I've got dyslexia. At the time, I knew we were shown exercises to help Lauren address this by stretching out her toes. Yes, we were. But we get, didn't get told that she'd got shortening of something on her feet. Um, I'm very sorry that you have been unable to 
Respond to your questions and give you your answers. Okay, sorry about that. I keep getting disturbed by my teenage dog coming in and out of the house. I'm basically covering the back. The, the, oh. the fracture happened in their care and they're the ones that rang social services. Funnel explained injury and they classed it as a non accidental injury. Well, they was wrong. I would never have hurt her on purpose. And if I had had an accident, she would have been in a &E. and I took her straight up. I fell with Rosie when she was um, a baby. Um, I didn't, when Rosie was a baby, I was learning to drive. I didn't drive. And I got in a taxi, and the taxi driver moved the buggy, and I tripped over it and fell with Rosie. And all I could think was a head, a head, a head. And I put my arm under a head as I fell. And I grazed my arm. So I hurt myself. And I thought I'd fractured her ribs trying to... Gr I grabbed her that tight to try and stop her falling. But she fell with me. And her head landed on my, my arm, which that's what I wanted. And took her up to A&E just to get her checked anyway. And I'd only bruised the ribs. They did say, oh, you can come to Fretch Clinic tomorrow. It's because she was walking at the time. And when I put her down, she woke up. And they went, you can come to Fretch Clinic tomorrow. But she starts walking. There's no need for you to come. And she started walking. So luckily I've not done anything. I did say to Dan, I'd be surprised if social services are called, but, but they didn't get called. So, um, so I'm putting the iron back. I've got one of those ironing board and iron stand things. Um, so. So, social services, they use this paragraph of, what is it, physical and emotional harm and physical and emotional neglect and physical and emotional abuse. It is an awful paragraph to use, especially innocent. And they brought the other children into it and it really supposed to be in a single case. Um, so all the children had an interim care order. Leonie had a supervision order because she was older. They supervised her from a distance. But for him to be all under child protection for an injury that I didn't cause, it was beyond... I, I can't explain it. I am still... Sometimes I feel like I'm still back there especially with the letter from the hospital they're not admitting it it's like they had their investigation now I want mine um, we had to send a letter to see what we get back to see if we've got a case it's looking like we may have a case we don't know at all we uh, give the solicitor the copy of the letter and then we'll know more um, but it's coming up to Lauren's first birthday on Wednesday the 18th. Can't believe it's been a year. Even though I've not really had much time with Lauren, if you get me, from the first, the first four and a half months of her life. Um, being supervised for four and a half months from the day she was 16 days of age everything just changed yeah I keep getting disturbed on these videos it's driving me bonkers so if it's all pause that's why um, you saw from the day of seeing 16 days everything changed 
up to the 20th of October 2015 when everything got withdrawn by they had to withdraw it because it was more likely to be in a birth injury than anything so I just wanted to share that with you I know I've already done a video on it of what I've been through and everything but now I'm more clear headed now it's all over with I'm sharing it with you and hope to God I'm going to tell you now if you ever th if you have had a baby every time you change it's nappy or pick the baby up he, cry, he or she cries or she makes this funny noise this noise you you try and get help and tell them that the baby's in pain don't say oh it's because of her feet or it's normal just just fight fight with it um, I also told a midwife that one of her legs were fatter than the other one and I got told it was normal. So, yeah. I think that's all. And I'll do another video on Lauren's update. I'll do that later tonight. If I've got a minute. Or it might be tomorrow if we're not tonight. Okay then, bye.